What's going on everybody? We are looking at a red day starting the week off on the wrong foot. And over the weekend, Bitcoin was pushing, got all the way nearly to 65,000, starting to pull back as the market opens. Wall Street playing a little games, obviously. But these are our chances to buy our top miners, our favorite miners. And by the way, if you don't wanna pick and choose what miner you like the most, I think a great way to go, takes very little thought, and also helps in terms of risk is just buying WGMI. This is a Bitcoin mining ETF. It also holds things like Nvidia. And this gives you some generalized exposure to the Bitcoin mining industry without having to pick and choose your own stocks. And I do think this is a great way to go. It takes risk off the table because I do believe it's gonna be diversified in the Bitcoin miners. If you just hold one, they can get swayed very easily with news, whether it's dilution, whether it's a short report, there will be times where a certain Bitcoin miner is pulling back while all the others are running and vice versa. So it is a good idea to be diversified. But anyways, in this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of Bitcoin miners, some upcoming news. Bitcoin holds steady as Mt. Gox moves $800 million in Bitcoin to a new wallet. Now this move was made on August 21, but this is the most recent information we have of Mt. Gox. And this is their first major Bitcoin move since the end of July. But check this out, recent distributions have already brought them up to about 140,000 Bitcoin distributed or about $9 billion given to creditors. And what are they holding left? Well, they're holding 46,164 Bitcoin according to this article, which is roughly 2.74 billion. And I have a couple quotes to go over. This from Alex Thorne, the head of Galaxy's research. We think that of the 13,265 Bitcoin moved in this transaction, only 1,265 or 74 million is meant to be distributed, with 12,000 Bitcoin going to a state fresh cold storage. Perhaps this gets distributed at a different time, or maybe this is just surplus. But anyways, moving on, that would mean Gox has distributed 97,000 Bitcoin of 142,000, which means about 45,000 Bitcoin is remaining. Uh, but then he goes on to say, if they're done, then our original estimate was pretty close. They may not be done though, but probably very small left if any. We're now mostly unbothered, no longer burdened by most of what had been. Most of the Mt. Gox transfer is in the creditor's hands now. And I gotta say, I agree with Plan B here. Plan B highlighted Bitcoin's resilience, noting that the recent large scale sales, such as Germany, such as Celsius, Gemini distributions, Mt. Gox, obviously, all these things have been factored into the price. And coming up, we have a $12 billion redistribution from FTX in Q4. This could be the spark that ignites the pump. And speaking of FTX, we do have some news that came out today. The reorganization plans are challenged by US trustee and creditors. Some flaws have been pointed out. And while about 95% of creditors have voted for this uh, proposal, there are some objections. And uh, this Andrew Vara points out some problems. There's a disparity between the amounts received by certain groups. Seems unfair, and I agree. Now this plan wants to provide 119 of lost funds as refunds to creditors below 50,000 but those that are owed more than 50,000 could receive up to 143%. Now he argued that this estate has enough funds to provide equal compensation for everybody, whether you have 50,000 or above or below. And I gotta say, I agree, that is somewhat unfair. Not somewhat, that is very unfair. The debtors have enough cash on hand on the effective date to pay convenience claimants the same rate as other customer claims. There's no discernible difference in the legal attributes of these customers' claims. There is also a security breach and Kroll, which is basically the company that is helping FTX out with all this. Well, Kroll has billed millions of dollars to FTX because of the security breach that Kroll's executives handled. And also FTX creditors are demanding repayments in crypto, and it'll be interesting to see how this affects the market. If they all get paid out in crypto, could that bring some selling pressure? If they all get paid in crypto, could that bring some initial buying pressure because of FTX having to buy that crypto potentially? Not sure. If they all get paid out in cash, will some go out to buy some crypto? Perhaps. But that's what's going on with FTX. It might not be a smooth process for everyone to get their funds back. It's definitely irritating for people. No, I wasn't in FTX, but I was in Voyager and I definitely lost money there. Very irritating stuff. Every crypto bear market, we will have this kind of flushing out of shitty companies pardon my language, but it'll be interesting to see what comes in the next bear market, who collapses next. There will be some collapse again. So be diversified. Don't put all your money into one exchange. Don't put all your money into one crypto. Definitely disperse your funds. Now I do want to mention that Iron or Iris Energy, they have earnings coming up in two days, August 28th. And they give a couple bullet points here just to kind of refresh you on what's going on with Iron, where they're at here. Bitcoin mining, they are expanding to 30 exahash in 2024. They've been operating since 2019. In terms of AI, they have 816 NVIDIA H100s. This is very recent. This has started in 2024, and it has been growing quite nicely so far. 
As for their data centers, they have 260 megawatts of operating data centers, expanding to 510, so just about doubling this in 2024. And they have 2,310 megawatts of secured power capacity across North America, a 1,000 acre property portfolio, and additional development pipeline. And they are 100% renewable energy, thanks to mostly the purchase of RECs. I think that is kind of shady in my opinion. I hate how companies do this just to look good. I think it's kind of stupid, honestly. But they are targeting sites with a low cost and a underutilized renewable energy. And to me, iron is definitely in a buy zone. We came down all the way to six. I did point out there's potential we can come down to the fives. I think at this point, it's kind of unlikely. If we can get into the sixes again, that'd be fantastic to add. But I do personally think we are going to be working on our next leg up as long as Bitcoin doesn't dump. If Bitcoin dumps, maybe we do get lucky and we get a push down towards this ascending support line and fill out this pattern. We didn't really hit it this last recent time. We did instead use the psychological six as a bouncing off point. And on the daily, it literally touched oversold just like it did here. Keep in mind, just because it's oversold doesn't mean it can't go back down. We were oversold here, had a short term pop and then bounced down. And we were less oversold here than we were back here, but the price was lower. There was an RSI divergence there. And then we went on to rally. But I want to remind you that just because something's oversold or overbought doesn't mean that it's going to just turn around like that. Things can continue downwards. Things can short term bounce and then continue down. I think what's important to remember is it is a momentum indicator. But anyways, I do like iron here. They do have earnings coming up in two days. Like I said, they're expecting a profitable quarter. They're also expecting a fifty seven and a half million dollars in revenue, which would be nice growth over the last quarter. And last quarter, they did post a profitable quarter. Iron is definitely one I like a lot for the rest of the cycle. And I do think it's going to treat us very well. Now, before I get into Bitcoin, another Bitcoin miner I really like here is Riot. Riot is down at a support area. It has previously bounced off this ascending support and it seems like we are respecting it right already gave earnings they did post a loss not very surprising pretty much all the bitcoin miners did that i believe the only bitcoin miner that posted profit was hive and then potentially iron here but yeah right posted a loss uh they did post a profitable quarter before the quarter post having so the quarter ending in march they did post a profit as well as the one before that. There are not many miners that posted two consecutive quarters of profitability pre-having. Going on, Riot does expect a nice growth in revenue, which is wonderful. Expecting more than they were pre-having, pre-rewards cut. That's fantastic. Riot has been growing nicely. And they do have quite a large pipeline of growth. This obviously is open to interpretation. This can obviously be changed. This can be altered. They might not meet their goals, but this is basically their roadmap. They have huge exahash growth on the way. And they do expect a hash rate of 36 exahash by the end of 2024. That's pretty big growth. I do like Riot a lot. I think they're a relatively safe Bitcoin miner compared to many others. They might not give as many gains compared to some of the smaller caps, but I do believe the risk is considerably lower with something like a Riot that has proven itself with profitable quarters and will likely move back to profitability before many of the other Bitcoin miners. Now looking at Bitcoin, we did get a dump into the market, pushing those stocks around, obviously playing games getting retail to uh, panic, killing retail on those calls. This is on the daily, but if you look in a shorter time frame, you'll see that this was a clear pattern and it looks like we are breaking it and failing our 200 MA. See if we get a candle to close out and under the 200 MA. This might just be a fake out and we might end up with just the shadow under the moving average. Right before this little move down into the market, we did have a very nice weekend for Bitcoin. Of course, we have Powell basically guaranteeing at this point that we're going to get some rate cuts in September. And on that news, it did cause a lot of the Bitcoin miners to spike, Bitcoin to spike. And we did get a nice breakout of this pattern that we were forming. We also have a very interesting pattern on the monthly. I think the market might react to a breakout in either direction of this pattern. And it does look like we're getting a bit of a bearish divergence on the four hour. RSI was starting to cool down while the price was trying to maintain the same level. I would say that's a bit of a bearish divergence. Not an obvious one, not a great one, but it is definitely more clear on the one hour. You'll see how our momentum was waning. We were starting to pull back. While the price was pretty much staying at the same level, the RSI went from overbought almost towards oversold in that matter of time. While Bitcoin has been in a range of about a thousand. It might take us some work to finally get out of this downtrend, but I do believe we are looking at the right quarter to expect it. Q4 in every halving cycle, every halving year, we have seen that explosive rally. And that kind of kicks off the post having year 2025, 2021, 2017, 2013. Those years all were parabolic and I expect the same for Bitcoin. 
And Wall Street isn't stupid. They know Bitcoin's history. They know what Bitcoin's about to do. They have been loading up. Keep in mind that this cycle might be a little earlier. Keep in mind that many people are probably front running the cycles. As the four year cycles become more and more common knowledge, there will be people trading based around it. And knowing that, hey, we're entering crypto winter, I'm gonna sell a little bit earlier than everybody else. So just keep that in mind that these cycles will fluctuate. They won't be the same. They won't be exactly identical. And you definitely wanna take profits into strength. When we get ripping and roaring, when all the excitement's coming in, when you get those crazy bullish price targets where everyone thinks Bitcoin is just gonna keep going up and you have that real sense of FOMO, that's when you need to reassess, consider at least taking some profits along the way, selling calls on your positions, trimming, exiting, and preparing for hard times. There will be the rough times. We will have a bear market. And who knows, maybe the cycles completely play out differently. Maybe 2025 is where the bear market starts and 2025 will be a great time to buy. But in my opinion, for now, I'm expecting 2025 to be that rally year and it will be the time to sell. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the cycles will play out like they always have? Or will we see some variances here and there because of the amount of money going into the spot Bitcoin ETFs? Will Wall Street be able to manipulate price? Are they already manipulating price? I would say yes to some extent. But in the end, Bitcoin will continue following its cycle. There is a capped amount of Bitcoin that there ever will be. And we have 94% of that total amount already in the supply already in the circulation. So over the next roughly 100 years or more, the world will be fighting for the last 6% of Bitcoin. And that is why Bitcoin will one day be tens of millions of dollars. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully this day ends a little better. Otherwise, it's a great chance for us to load up, get ready for Q4, get ready for the end of this rally. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.